Welcome everybody to Why Are You an Entrepreneur? The Trials and Triumphs. I'm Maureen Edwards, the founder of Eight Simple Steps. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, let me share with you the drill. Uh, this is where I bring you rock star entrepreneurs every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Standard Time. And we just have a conversation about what entrepreneurship is all about, giving you some words of wisdom, some best practices, and letting you know you're not alone in this very difficult journey. I say it every single week. My rock star this week is Catherine Innes. She is a broker and the owner of her own real estate uh, group called North Star. So welcome, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Ms. Maureen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So one of the things that caught my eye is that you have been an entrepreneur for 23 years. And yes, so this is, a, yeah, this is one of those things where, you know, I have people from all different stages, but when I see somebody on this, like over two decades, I have to ask them, why do you keep doing this? Because <laughs> it isn't easy, Not you know? Not so why are you an entrepreneur? Share with the group. Oh man, the simplest and best way to describe why I'm on I'm an entrepreneur is that I literally don't like being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I, once I left my mom's house, I was like, enough with anybody telling me what to do. And so that's it. That is lit. I will wake up every day to make myself money and tell myself what I need to do uh than having to get up you know and go do that for someone else so that's that's the motivating factor of why i do what i do well i love the fact that you want to take control of your destiny not somebody else doing that but uh you're probably not in the mood to make everybody else rich with your hard work that's what i i say what yeah you might as if you're going to work this hard you might as well work for yourself work for but, yourself that is the motto that is yeah, the but, motto but it's not easy. So tell me how you started this company. How's, how's your path? Like what? Yeah. Where you so I actually have had a wonderful, uh, interesting curve filled, you know, path to get to, to this point of being broker owner of my own real estate firm. So, um, I was in the military. So when I first uh, left out of my uh, parents' home, I joined the Air Force and that got me to Texas, San Antonio, Texas, where I did base uh, boot camp as well as that's where I was stationed. And that's when I really learned the hard way that I do not like people telling me what to do. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, you went into something where they're all telling you what you can eat. That you can was, dress. <laughs> now I know. Early, learn early. This is not who you want to do on your on your day to day. God bless the military, of course. Um, you know, I met some wonderful people there. Uh, but yeah, that was a, a lesson really quickly on on that, you know, that aspect of it. But when I was getting out of the military, um, you know, I was looking around like, okay, what am I going to do that's going to allow me freedom, right? Because that's what I was always seeking is freedom. And my best friend at the time, her dad was retiring from the military. So we're talking about 20, 30 years of service. And he introduced me to real estate. And that literally is where I found the freedom that I was looking for, but also the capacity to basically design, you know, design my own destiny. And so that that started the path. And, you know, there's been turbulations. My, my son was born when the market was crashing in 07 and 08. So I did have to go back and, and work. But again, it taught me, it like recentered my mind, like, you know what, we don't we don't want to be told what to do 30 minute lunches and all that. So, um, I was able to to get back on my path, but I was I was a, an employee for for a few years after the market crash and work on myself. You got to do what you got to do, right? And Absolutely. what I call these is is um, people will call them side hustles. I just call them exit strategies, or you know, the job was really the side hustle until it could turn around. And Absolutely. and you know, your mindset your mindset is so different when you got to take a job and you know you know what this is kind of like a hobby because I know I'm not staying. Here's my time, and I'm skedaddling out of there. So it's like we Absolutely. we can spend a couple years doing that 
knowing it's not forever, you know, wait till things turned around. Yeah. What is, what has been, um, well, I, I'm imagining that's been your greatest challenge in real estate. Um, but is there something else that sticks out that, that has been very challenging? Um, I think that that period of 07 plus, uh, I think until, um, not that maybe 2010 ish in that run in that range when I was working, um, it pushed me though. It, it really did. So during that time I, I got my, uh, my master's in built, um, my master's in business administration, my MBA. And then when I was transitioning to get back into real estate, you know, really uh, examining what I wanted to do. And I always wanted to develop property, uh, build communities. And so I, I went back and did a second master's at University of Maryland for real estate development. So that way, when I transitioned in, it was more a uh, purpose driven versus I'm just a, you know, a realtor selling houses all day. It's like, no, we're transitioning to ownership. So that way I can build my own product. And so, you know, at this point, literally I'm living that design and that's what I'm doing now. And which, you know, the, the challenge to get through those humps to get here was, you know, an interesting journey to watch, but I always knew what the end result was going to be. So, so you're talking about evolution. You started with residential and now, you know, I'm talking it looks like you're making an impact and an income, which is really the best of both worlds. So, so yeah. you don't work with, um, you know, families or singles, people looking for an actual home. You're doing I more do. the larger. You do both. I do both. I literally just helped a young couple. They're with their first condo um, last week in uh, Glen Burnie. And I'm closing on another property from tenant to now homeowner in uh, Pasadena. So, yeah. So still work on the residential side, but work with commercial um, business owners, but then also my own uh, development. I like how you have two different um, opportunities. You didn't just one bucket and rely on it because you kind of yeah. saw what happened. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. So you've got like two streams of income that if one kind of goes down, which is some are tough right now, even. Right. With the, with the interest rates. I mean, so seeing that things are tough now, I don't know if it it's very different than the crash, you know, in 2008, but it's still a challenge. How are you preparing your business for the challenge that is happening right now? So part of that is expertise in the industry overall. Um, so the, the market goes up and down in cycles every eight to 10 years. There's a cycle. And so being able to be in the business long enough to know what cycle you're in, but then also know what's about to come. So not only are you educating yourself, you're educating your clients, but you're preparing, right? So like this whole Corona, you know, uh, down market, I was talking about it two years ago, you know, letting people know like this is we're in it now. This is the start of it because we were finishing up that, you know, eight to 10 year cycle from 07. And so, it, you know, it literally, it, it happened as it always does. There's always a bust. It doesn't necessarily dictate which industry has the bust. You just know that there's going to be an industry bust and you have to reset. And so, you know, if you didn't appreciate the downtime during uh, the Corona, you know, epidemic that came and really was able to reset your business strategies, what you want to do, your priorities, like that was a moment to reflect on your priorities, right? No one was expecting yeah. anything from you. You only had what was in front of you and you didn't know what was happening. You had to you know, do a mental adjustment on that and be able to prepare yourself to come out of the other side. So, you know, to me, that was uh, really, really important. That is absolutely great advice. It sounds like it, you've got to pivot. I mean, it's all about adaptability. Entrepreneurship, I say to people, if you are really inflexible, you're going to have a really hard time with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and look at the circumstances out there have been so hard. Entrepreneurs across all industries that hit everybody really hard and very unexpectedly. But I like your your mindset that, you know what, keep an open mind, keep moving forward and realize that you've got to be open to different things and be able to adjust to it. So I think that's Absolutely. just great advice. Um, so you a lot of people are brokers, right, but they're not owners of the brokerage firm. So what made you take the leap from, yeah, you're an independent realtor, but now I want to own my own brokerage. So great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, 
So yeah, I've been a real a real estate salesperson for a long time. And in that process, I was teaching continuing education to agents that need to maintain their licenses, as well as uh, pre-licensing. So those uh, people that are interested in getting a real estate license. So I was teaching them to, you know, basically prepare to take the test. And I got a lot of positive feedback all the time from the students. And it would be like OGs in the business that has been in it 30, 40 years. Like, yeah, that was the best CE class I've ever had. Or, you know, um, pre-licensing people were asking me like, you know, how can I sign up with you? Um, but my former broker uh, was a young lady that, you know, started in 10, one agent to 10 agents to 400 agents. And that's oh my not goodness. my goal is the 400 agents because I was her, um, in essence, her proper, uh, her, um, her office manager. So it's a lot of work, but um, it was a definitely um, a vision of saying, you know what, you can do this and you're able to. And, and so the expertise that I've gained and the knowledge that I've gained you know, throughout these years, uh, being able to just kind of do it on my own terms and how I want to, the marketing, what I do, and not have to, again, not have to answer to anyone, um, really was like, it, she sold her business, actually. That was the point of that. She sold her business. And so I was like, well, instead of going to look for another brokerage, you know, I have it all. I have what I need to do. And and then now it's my time to test myself. So, so that's how the transition and the pivot from salesperson to Broker owner of uh, yeah. yeah yeah now do you have uh, people who work for you so no right now I'm a, a single person broker owner because I do have other businesses so yeah. I, I don't have um, you know mentally capacity to really you know um, get people in and give them the mentorship that I want but I'm also working on. Uh, the standard operating procedures and, you know, the different uh, lead generation sources. So when I do bring someone on, it'll just be a seamless transition for them to kind of get on and, and do what they have to do. Okay, so you mentioned two things that I want to, I want to elaborate here. Um, lead generation and marketing. Yeah. So one of the hardest things is for people to reach, engage, acquire and retain customers. We're all like always trying to figure out who do we help next, right? How in your business do you go ahead and generate leads and, and market yourself and differentiate yourself from a lot of other people who are doing what you're doing? So yeah. tell me what your process is. So I have a few different approaches because again, been in this thing a little bit long, a long time. So you got to know how to get business from all sources, but not overworking yourself to get it, right? Quality leads versus quantity um, would be, you know, the, the where you want to kind of have your, your mindset. So um, again, education is a big part of who I am, teaching, giving information. And so what I've learned a long time ago is giving real estate information to people that want it um, and you're doing that for free brings a return. So I do first time home buyer classes. So I just did one last Saturday at Forest Park Library, um, you know, maybe a month ago at the Central Library in Baltimore. We're doing another one in PG County. Um, so that's one way that I do uh, generate leads. And I, and I get clients out of those people that are actually, I had a guy that was visiting from Seattle that literally signed up for the class while he was on vacation to come to the class. So that was pretty, you know, pretty cool. Another young lady was on her work break Right. So these are people that are vested in the process to learn what needs to be done. So those are, you know, customers and clients. Right. Um, I just got a call last weekend from the Google. Right. I call it the Google. Um, but it works. Right. Because I have a five star review on the Google. And so the lady calls like literally you're the first person to pick up and you have great reviews. You know, can you help me? And I'm helping her friend, actually. So she was making calls for a friend. So I'm helping her friend, um, her friend's daughter get a place. So yeah, so, that, so those things, which is what you're saying, the um, online, it, it works. Um, and you just have to, you know, utilize it. I don't do social media. I'm a little bit of an uh, old school person, so I don't really entertain it. I don't like it uh, just for personal reasons. But I know that YouTube and, you know, there's, a, the you know, just the online platform having a high ranking and utilizing that work. So those are just some of the ways that I 
generate leads. Yeah. And you know what? I really love this because a lot of people are so dependent on social media. It's like, oh, that's how I'm growing my whole business and I don't have any money and I'm going to do it all for free and it'll all be organic. And and I'm like, how's that working out for you? Well, right. not really well. And, you know, and, and not everybody should be like on Facebook, you know, a plumber, you know, if you're having a flood, are you going to Facebook to look for your plumber? No, you're going to the mm-hmm. internet, you're searching yeah. a plumber, you're looking at those reviews, and I bet you're on the Google My Business, which a lot of people <laughs> are not using. That is such an important marketing strategy, yeah. and it's almost like getting a secondary website because it's owned by Google, and they pop you up yeah. in your SEO. So for everybody out there, listen to Catherine. She is using that as a huge lead generator. And yeah. um, The other thing that I 100% agree with you because I I do the same thing. You're taking your knowledge and you're making an impact for others. You don't need anything in return. But when you graciously give it, it's amazing how it comes back abundantly. Yeah, it does. It does. Whether they, they need you or they're just learning, they're not ready. But in the back of their mind, they'll go, you know, I'm ready now. Right. Let me remember her. Yeah, I did a class uh, pre-COVID, first time home buyer class. It was like maybe uh, this one couple and maybe another person. So it was a small turnout. But from that class, um, I got them, the couple to buy. They bought, they sold, and then the husband came back to buy again um, from that one class. That is amazing. Yeah. And I know what realtors, referrals. I think everybody... You know, it's it's referrals, it's word of mouth. But I know referrals, realtors really, you know, that's kind of their major, you know, lead gen. Yeah. Um, do you find that referrals coming in is also kind of that third tier for you? Or is that kind of like way down? No, no. Uh, referrals are key. They're, they're powerful. They're important. Uh, my tenant from my rental property referred his girlfriend to me and we ended up she, for rental property. And I'm like, you know what, what do, what, let's kind of look at your situation. Cause we're going on the second time we're helping you with the rental, you know, you should be able to buy. And literally we got her into a home uh, maybe about two months ago. And she was paying like on her, if not a little bit less, obviously from what she was paying on her rent on a mortgage, a single family, three bedroom basement, nice cute front yard backyard across the street from a park and she's a a, a, a customer care tech with um with like comcast or something so you know it's just a matter of when you sit down and talk to people and see what they need and then you know how to help them so you know that is are great referrals are great <laughs> yeah yeah the networking the the referrals and and what's great about those is that it's like getting the 10 star review <laughs> you know what i mean this is Right. People listen to other people. You yeah, know, it's social yeah. proof, but word of mouth. Oh my gosh! Anybody yeah. who can get word of mouth for their business, I, that is the absolute gold. Absolutely, out there. So, doing this for so long, um, what has been like the greatest success that you feel that's kind of like that warm in your heart success that you have had with your company that comes to mind? Yeah, um, the referrals. The referrals. Literally, um, knowing that I helped someone and they thought enough of me to send someone else and or when I've helped someone and they come back for more help. Right. Um, to hear that, you know, they're appreciative of my help beyond words more than I'll ever know, you know, and, you know, you're helping someone. So for me, that's the biggest kind of reward and, you know, through it all why I do it, uh, you know, when you're able to solve a problem for someone and help them in a way that benefits them, right? Because real estate is an asset. Of course, it's a liability because you have the mortgage. But at the end of the day, if you manage it right, it's an asset. And to to help more people earn assets and not just random Mason debt or Target debt or, you know, anything like that. When you're helping them build wealth, it makes them, and showing them how you're helping them build wealth. It, it's, a, it's a really big thing. You know, I really like this, Catherine, because you're not just selling a home. It's like you're financially like a financial advisor and letting them see the investment short term, but but long term. And long-term. I mean, it's it's a fact that 
people who own homes build more wealth than those who don't. So I love how you got the renter. You know what? Let's kind of shift your mindset. And really, it's they don't know what they don't know, right? They don't until, know what they don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Until an expert comes along and offers, you know, just here's information. Take a look at it. You don't want to force them. It's their decision, but they just didn't know about it. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me what you do for fun. <laughs> I'm going to get on personal stuff. I know. No, it's totally okay. Uh, you know, the number one is when I'm able and when my son's busy schedule allows, um, it's hanging out with him. So we'll do trips and go, you know, do fun things. So Chicago Bears, go to the Chicago for a game. Um, I was telling you before we started, uh, took him to California to go to UCLA to see the campus you know, Deep Creek for Thanksgiving to, you know, go to the lake and hang out. So, like, that's my number one favorite thing. We play, you know, games and stuff like that. It's my only baby, so, I, you know, try to keep him as close as long as possible. He's almost out of here. Yeah. But outside of that, because I do work so hard, I acknowledge that I work really hard, um, I veg out and I'll, like, find a show that I can binge on and then, like, I'll do that for three days and, you know, just, like, not think about anything. So, those are like, and then the beach is my all-time favorite. So anything beach-related, I'm there. But those are my kind of relaxing things that I like to do. Well, I'm totally in agreement on the beach. That's going to be <laughs> yeah. my goal. I just want this little cottage to live right. on the right. sand. That's, That's it. it. That's uh, it. I have, a, I have a retirement business already uh, uh, picked out. So I'm going to be yeah. making hand-blown glass candles on a beach somewhere. So that's it. Wow. You've already got it all I working it out. Cool. Cool. So, um, you know, and, and I agree with the whole binging thing. Like, I, I feel the same way when you just need to clear your head. For me, I go to sleep. Yeah. I, say, I just want to yeah. go to bed. And in the, you know, the next day I get refreshed. But I think every entrepreneur needs to have some type of outlet, right. whatever that is, right. that allows you to clear your head and you know, and get back on track. So yeah. give me like one, one piece of advice for somebody who wants to go ahead and say, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm leaving corporate America. I'm leaving the military, whatever I'm leaving. That's that steady stuff. What would you, yeah. what would you give them, you know, some advice on? So the two pieces of advice that I feel um, has guided me through this whole kind of uh, entrepreneur journey where I'm happy with, you know, the decisions that I've made. Uh, the first is um, walk by faith and not by sight, right? If it's something that's in your heart to do and you believe in yourself, right? You don't need 85 confirmations from all your friends and family of, can I do this? What do you think I can do this? If it's in your heart and you know you can do it, you step off the cliff and know that the path will be there for you. Like, you just have to know it. That's That's a... Uh, a number one thing. And then the second is plan your work, right? So if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. And planning is key to everything. So you do things in quarters, right? Break it down quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. What are your goals? And then what are you willing to do in each of those quarters to get you to that goal for the quarter? Because you can do one little thing every day. Nothing has to be every every day, 24 hours a day, right? But you can do some things, two things, three things during that day to get you to your goal at the end of the week, which then gets you to the goal at the end of the month. Because you don't see results. You know, it takes time. So three to six months is usually a time to see something coming to fruition. Um, but you got to be able to look back and say, what did I do to work towards that goal? And and that's where your self-accountability, if you really, really want it, that's where that yeah. comes in at. So, that's so what I give me that quote before the first one. Get, what uh, was that? <laughs> what was that? The, well, uh, having faith, right? That, so yeah. that's the main one. Yeah. Um, Walking by faith and not by sight. So you have to have faith in yourself. Um, and again, you have to know yourself what you're capable of. And if you have doubts in yourself, then anybody that you come in contact with to get business, they'll sense that doubt off the top. So yeah. what do you think is the one thing when people go into entrepreneurship that trips them up? Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Yeah. 
um, and not planning their not planning their their strategy, right? Um, having a, a harebrained idea of okay, I want to start a business and this is what I want to do. Okay, great, but you know what does the success of that business look like to you? What does it feel like to you? You know, what makes it a success that you're able to wake up at 10 in the morning or that you make a hundred thousand, you know, per month. So like you have to know what you want out of that entrepreneurship, out of that business. And then you have to have the faith in yourself to manifest and really work for the goal. Um, because you're doing it for yourself, right? If you wanted Great. someone else to pay you a paycheck, you'd get up, apply for a job, get up at six in the morning, commute, get there, get your paycheck. And like, that's that. But if you know that you have the capacity to, you know, make X, Y, Z gadgets and make a hundred thousand a month, then you have to know how to get there and be confident in yourself that you can get yourself there. I love, I love that. You know, hope is not a strategy. Hope right? is not a strategy. We yeah. Should, we should, hope is wonderful. And I think we should have faith and we should have hope. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, let me tell you. Yeah. You got to have a plan. You yeah. got to have a plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Fail so, to plan, plan to fail. <laughs> so tell me what makes you different than other realtors because you have a lot of competition. Yeah. Right? You got a lot of competition out there. Why should people choose you, Catherine, and not somebody else? Yeah. So first and foremost, I come um, with experience and expertise in my field. And I run into a lot of people that have years in the field, but don't have the expertise, meaning they're not seeking the knowledge to be able to share and help somebody else. So they just know the job and that they'll just do the job and run it through, you know, A, B, C, and D. Um, but when you actually have a desire to educate someone on the process so they understand what they're doing, because it is, you know, the saying is true. That's one of the biggest purchases they'll make in a lifetime. Yes. And so if you don't take the fear out of that big purchase up front by educating them on the process, but also providing options, first time home buyer credits, first time home buyer grants, you know, different benefits that they can get, making sure that they know that if you make one extra payment a year in principle only, it reduces the amount of time that you would have the mortgage. So if you're not there to educate them on those things and first time home buyers, first new builds, constructions, um, then you don't have someone that values you to say, you know what, they really had my best interest at heart. I didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel pressured. I literally learned, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know what, you should use her. And so that's that's what makes me different. Awesome. All right, so tell people where they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. Um, whether they are a home buyer or, you know, somebody who's looking, you know, more on the commercial side or, you know, so tell people where you're located. Absolutely. So um, I am a broker owner of North Star Realty Group. So we work with residential clients, first time home buyers, uh, people that are selling their property to either upgrade or relocate, uh, renters as well on the residential side and landlords that need to lease. So if you want to have someone that could uh, basically take a client and uh, qualify them and get them into your property, uh, that's something that I do as well, as well as commercial real estate. So I love, love, love working with business owners that are either purchasing um, a new space for their business instead of leasing, right? If you own, you have a lot of uh, benefits and tax credits that you can get. Um, but also anyone that's looking to rent, if you do need to, um, a new space and then development projects. So anybody that's interested in building, uh, multifamilies or mixed use properties, um, helping them through that process. So those are, uh, so basically the lifespan of the real estate transaction, um, I'm able to help someone no matter where they're at. And so and how of Maryland and DC. Okay, so how do they get a hold of you? Do you have a website? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What What's your website? Um, my website is mynorthstarrealtygroup.com. Uh, uh, my phone number is two four zero four two one seven zero two seven, and my email address is super easy. It's my first name Catherine with a period, and then my last name I N N I S S at gmail.com. 
And um, I'm really great with emails, follow-ups, text messages, and phone calls, as long as it's not scam only, because that one gets a little bit tiring to answer. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Catherine. You have thank just dropped you. amazing words of wisdom today. And I hope everybody has picked up some best practices from Catherine. And if you need a realtor, uh, I think you should seek her out right here in the Maryland, D.C. area. So sit tight for one second. I want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. If you're watching the replay again, please join us on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slash Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Maureen Edwards. If you need somebody to take the hard out of converting customers so you can have a sustainable business, let's have a conversation. Um, because if you're doing lots of marketing and you're still not converting, you don't have a marketing problem, got a messaging problem. So let's get that taken care of. All right, everybody, we're out and uh, I will see you next week with another rock star.